welcome to today's review, which is SPQR by Warlord Games, and it's the revised edition, which has just come out. Now, I didn't pick up the first edition. Uh, one of those games I planned to get around to, I never did. And then when I saw they were bringing out a new edition, it was a case of, okay. And then I noticed Warlord had a deal on uh, where they were going to give the rule book away free if you bought a box of figures. Okay, that's a bargain. Um, can't, can't resist a bargain. Now, SPQR itself stands for, and I'll read this, Senatus Populusque Romanus, for the people and senate of Rome. Okay, so that's what the, um, the rules stand for, in case anyone's wondering. Um, now, it's a, it's a lovely book, it's really high quality paper. Uh, you can see the it's got some nice illustrations in it, we've got plenty of nice photos of games going on, it's nice simple diagrams for the, for the maps, uh, occasional little bit of artwork that you can see there, which has come from the, the box sets, um, and lots and lots of nice figures and a few maps as well. So nice production quality. Uh, it's perfect band, which isn't ideal, but you're not going to be flicking through it that much during the game. Uh, there is a very nice little quick reference sheet uh, inside the first page, which is all you need. And to be honest, you won't need that very much. So let's have a look what we've got. We've got a good contents page to start off with. I always like to see a nice contents page, particularly when there isn't an index. Um, but it does help me find stuff quite quickly. So the introduction explains what miniatures gaming is. Uh, it's a very nice introduction. It says, think of miniatures gaming as chess, but with freeform movement, you're not restricted to squares, random elements, troops pinned down by any missiles are likely to be in real trouble, but they might surprise you and start fighting back, and far prettier models. I, I like that little description. This is aimed at new gamers. There's, there's no two, two ways about it. Um, and I don't have a problem with that. Let's, let's bring some new blood into the hobby. Uh, this is easy enough that I can see me using this um, with my grandkids. They, they would probably like this. It, it's simple and quick. Now, there's also a note on historical accuracy, um, which basically says, yeah, we don't know a lot. Um, and... I was reminded when I was reading it that um, there was a lovely article many, many years ago in War uh, Miniature War Games magazine, which said, imagine trying to reconstruct the Falklands War from some rusty bits of rifle, uh, some Argentine press releases, and Sun News editorials. Yeah, we've got more evidence there than we actually have for so ancient wars. So we're going to have problems. I, I, I fully get that. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to see that they've, they've taken the bull by the horns there and said we may get things wrong. Yeah. So it then talks about what about the, in the introduction what you need for play, which is quite simple: two or more players. Now I get a feeling this will work really well solo. Uh, I'm going to try it very shortly, and then I'll put a playthrough on the um, the channel so you can actually have a look at that. Uh, playing surface, such as tabletop or unobstructed floor space. Selection of miniatures, tape measure several dice or at least two it says and some scrap paper to jot things down you could add in a few markers uh, when you've got multiple wound heroes f for that to mark them um, but you don't really need that you could do that again on, on the notes um, it then talks about how to roll the dice and it only ever uses six-sided dice although it does drop to the d3 and explains what that is um, it talks about re-rolls the conventions for that you can only re-roll the dice once Although you can be made to re to re-roll them by your opponent, so th there is a, bit, a little bit there. Uh, it is a buckets of dice game basically. Um, talks about pre-measuring. Pre-measuring is always allowed. Okay, that that's good. Okay, I know some people think it slows games down, but I think it makes it more more of a gentleman's game rather than a um, a competitive game. So he then talks about the models and how uh, they go together. You've got basically split in two ways. The first way is the split into infantry and cavalry, That's straightforward, but they're also split into heroes and minions. Um, heroes are very much unit leaders, uh, minions are, um, well, I, I want to say the little yellow creatures, um, but in this it's, more, it's your standard troop types. Heroes aren't massively overpowered, it's not Warhammer, you're not going to take out a unit charging into it. Um, even if you're using one of the hero, legendary heroes, 
Um, what they are going to do though is give you that big bonus and they have special skills which will make a difference. So each figure, uh, hero and minion, is divided. Um, they've got a stat line which is very similar to what you get in most uh, Warhammer inspired games. You've got what the unit is, uh, how many denarii it costs to recruit them, because uh, that's the point system basically. A bit themed calling it denarii but I, I like the touch. Uh, and you have their move which is usually six inches for an infantry figure, less if they're wearing heavy armour. Uh, a ranged modifier, melee modifier, how many melee dice they roll. That's quite nice because it does differentiate so it can flay like hitting lots of targets or try to hit lots of targets but not very good at it or somebody who can do one attack but it's a massively powerful one so nice, nice touch. Uh, you've then got agility, bravery, armour and how many wounds they've got and again heroes aren't massively overpowered they tend to have something like two wounds so they, they, they are going to die fast if you're not careful. Um, now the mod, all the stats are basically a other move are very much a plus um, so that what you do is you roll the dice add the modifier and you need to roll six or more to succeed one always fails six always succeeds uh, it's quick it's simple uh, and it really was going to speed things up um, I like it it's simple and it's ideal for who we're aiming it at so we then get the the, the, the game turn section um, oh, we just talk about multiple model bases as well. So if you've got an army that's already done on multiple bases, how how it will cope with them, uh, and it basically says, yeah, you can play it. It's not a problem. Just mark how many casualties it's taken. Um, now, the turn itself, then uh, this basically works on um, a pretty much an I go you go system, but with a slight twist. At the start of each turn, both players roll a dice and re-roll ties until you get a clear winner. That person then decides who goes first or second. Okay, that's a very standard mechanism, but I then like this half a page describing it for new players. And it talks about the subtleties. That if you go second, you've got a 50-50 chance of having the option to go again, taking effectively a double turn. I like that. It's it that I know for most gamers we understand that, but for a new gamer that, that is something new. So, I th I, And the subtlety behind it is, is massive, so I think that's really good. Uh, once you then um, know who's going first, each that player moves all their units. And the option they get to do two actions from move, shoot, melee and special. Special might be things like um, finding stones for your slingshot, so you can so slings have to um, take a special action before they shoot. Okay, yeah, um, that that kind of makes sense. Uh, I think you might find some specialist units probably could have a special rule that, I mean, they've got a pouch so they don't need to do that. But yeah, that, that that's not unreasonable. Um, it might be a scenario specific one, so setting fire to a building or something. Uh, that's all in there. Um, and. Then you go into, into the actual move action, which basically is talks about how they move, what effect buildings have on there. Uh, mentions cover briefly, talks about climbing and jumping, being a skirmish type game. You, yeah, you're going to need that. Uh, we then go on to a, pa a couple of pages on shooting, um, which is very simple. And I'll, I'll read the, the bit that basically applies. The acting unit makes a ranged attack. Range check for every model in the unit that's making a ranged attack, i.e. for each model that's within range and has line of sight to at least one model in the enemy unit. Each successful range check causes one hit. For each hit on the enemy it receives, it takes an armour check. Each successful armour check negates a hit. And then each hit that isn't negated by an armour check removes one wound. That's it. Uh, there are some modifiers. Okay, I'm going to read you the full list. Target at long range, so over half range, minus one penalty to shoot. Target's a large unit, ten or more models, plus one dead. That's it. That's your modifiers. You can see why this is a simple game, but I like simple. Um, I I first played Ancients, playing WRG 6th edition. Yeah, that wasn't the easiest thing in the world to, to um, get your head around. So... It's fairly simple. Uh, it talks about then removing the casualties. You start with the ones closest to the attacking unit, which can be very useful if you think they're about to attack you. Uh, it talks about then cover there. 
So melee, again, I like the fact they've used exactly the same mechanism. Uh, it's incredibly simple. Uh, the subtle difference is here, because it says that so troops will, will sort of fill up from the back, um, you, you can remove um, any model. So you, you can uh, do it that way. So yeah, that, that, that's fairly straightforward. Uh, there's a rule on fleeing combat and ongoing combat. Uh, and again, that is basically it. Uh, it then gives you a, a sample scenario. Uh, troubling goal which can be which basically uses the figures that you get with the basic game no heroes uh, the Romans get um, two units of five legionaries each and the Gallic tribesmen uh, there's three units of seven each um, and it basically tells you how to set it up how to play how to play it um, and gives you a bit of advice as well, the summary at the end as to what they think of it. And that's the entire rules taken up on 15 pages. Big book, 196 pages? There's a bit more. You've then got the advanced rules, charging, uh, which basically um, gives it a lethal role, which basically reduces the armour, uh, provided you move at least three when you move into combat. Okay, I'd have put that in the basic rules, but it's not no problem. Talks about dual weapon, weapon fighting, falling, heroes joining units, because heroes can move around between units. Um, can add, they can join units, they can leave units, and how the rules work with that. Then talks about hiding as a special action, hit and run units, the classic um, Parthian shot, though I get the phrase uh, parting shot from, got rules for that, knockdowns. Um, Large unit rules, stunning, because there are some special skills and weapons that will do that. Will to fight, this is basically, um, is a unit going to, to run away? Um, and voluntary retreat. You've then got some of the special talents, so it talks about things like um, slow, which we've already mentioned, where you have to take a shoot action um, before shooting. Uh, inaccurate which means the player has to re-roll any successful ranged or melee weapons. Uh, long weapons, yeah, short weapons, uh, which affect the order that you... Um, so when you fight, the, you get a penalty if you've got, someone's got a longer weapon. Uh, there's then a few pages on creating the phalanx. Certain units can create a phalanx. It um, goes into the equipment and it basically gives you uh, a variety of different weapons and the special rules that apply to them. If you work on the principle that default is a sword, um, you'll have an idea. Everything else then has, has slight modifiers for it. Uh, you've got the same for ranged weapons, a page on armour. Uh, you've then got um, a little bit on equipment. Um, things like arrow aprons, riding camels, horns in units, uh, things like that. So you've got that. Uh, you know, because if you've played something like Necromunda or Mordheim, you'll have a full idea how this works. We've then got um, experience rules, how to, how your heroes can actually increase. Um, and it sort of talks about how they, they level up. Uh, campaigns, because this is this is designed for a warband that will fight on and fight on and fight on. Uh, it gives you the rules for creating a warband. Um, and the golden rule of what you see. So basically, what the figure's got, that's where it's got. Uh, it does come at, you, you know, units will have some mixed equipment. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a couple with swords and a unit with spears or vice versa. Uh, as long as it's clear to your opponent, it's acceptable. And I like that. It's not a rigid rule. Um, we then have, in the campaign section, um, basically injuries how you get more denarii at the end of a battle covers all of that and it gives you then six scenarios um, border invasion livestock occupy sacred ground sacking the village fall of heroes and caravan so we've got we've got that um, that takes us up to page 40 we then start with some heroes talents and they, they have skills trees where a hero will get the basic skill but then that opens up further skills um, that you can then do. So, for example, we'll use uh, Archer of Legend. The first talent they get is a precision shot. Um, 
and this lets you shoot into close combat. Your second option, if you take another, take another level in this, is to go for either a crippling shot, which can then be do, taken again to a critical shot, followed by one hour or one kill, so you'd have to take four levels to get that. Or after precision shot, you could take Eye of the Hawk, which also then opens up Armor Cracker. So you could actually develop down one of those paths, or you could actually start down one, keep those skills, and then start down the other or go straight to a different talent. So each hero will be very, very different. And that, that, that's quite nice. Uh, you're not going to have many heroes in an army. So that takes up um, quite a bit, in all fairness. That takes us up to... Where are we? A little bit too far there. That takes us up to page 54. And it then, for the rest of the book, are your different warbands. Um, now, each warband will give you the background, um, understanding of their society. Now, I love this. I love history. And there were bits in there I think were fascinating. Um, I hadn't realised that, for example, in the first one, Athens, uh, we've got a nice map as well, which shows us where everything is. Uh, and I like that. It shows all the different cities, um, the different areas. And it, it helped me get a good head on that. Um, but it talks about the um, the council of Athens, which is sort of the um, the lawmaking body, the main assembly. And it talks about the president of the council. Now I hadn't realised they were chosen by lot every day, and they could only ever do it once. Um, and what I find fascinating is that nearly a quarter of all citizens of Athens must have held it at some point. That's fascinating. Um, so it talks about how the military was organised, their appearance and equipment, um, and it then gives you the army list and any special rules. So, for example, with Athens, you've got mediocre archery. So a lot of Athenians um, weren't very good archers, so the sp their special rule is they have to take a special action to kneel and aim. Without that, they get a minus one penalty on range checks. It, it's simple, it's nice. The armies do seem balanced. I know there's been a lot of discussion regarding uh, the repointing of them. Uh, I said, not having got first edition, I, I can't really comment on that. Um, but is it, with each one, you get quite a few, you about half a dozen unit types. And then at the end, you get a few heroes of legend. So for Athens, we've got two. Um, we've got Cleon and Themistocles. Yeah, nicely chosen options. I can't fault them. Some of them do get more. Um, the... Caesarian Romans actually get five, um, including, and I love the touch, Titus Pullo and Lucius Varanus, um, using the historical versions, not the version from Rome. I'm guessing there's going to be an alternative version out there for the more um, TV type characters. But yeah. Um, and then after each one, you then get three scenarios specific to that culture. So you get slave raid strategic conquest and one night in Athens for the Athenians. Uh, these are about a page each um, and that, that gives you a, a bit of a, a themed one. So if you're the attacker you can choose to roll on this table or the ordinary table. So there's a lot more scenarios than the look. Uh, you often find your little quotes as well. Um, Thaucides is quoted here. Athens' biggest worry was the sheer recklessness of its own democratic government. A simple majority of the citizenry, urged on and incensed by a clever dem demagogues, might capriciously send out military forces in unnecessary and exhausting adventures. Gives you a taste for, for sort of how, how things were. Um, so you've got the Athenians, you've got the Britons, um, you've got Caesar's legions. Okay, this is what one of the forces that comes with the, the starter box. Um, so you've, you've got that. You've then got uh, Dacia and, and Sarmatia. Yeah, they're quite another interesting one. Not so on most people's radar if you're not an expert on the period. Gaul, uh, with a nice map breaking down all the tribes. Although I do notice the small village just on the coast isn't mentioned and you don't get Asterix and Obelix, but they probably would be a bit overpowered. But I will put a bet if I did an internet search I'd find them. Uh, Germania, yeah, we've got a nice um, sort of details on there. Uh, he particularly talks about the Teutonberg Forest, um, and again, you know, 
uh, you actually got Arminius if you really wanted to go uh, for that one. Um, you've then got Iberia or Spain and the, the Spanish armies. Uh, Imperial Rome, okay, that's the one that most people are going to be familiar with. Uh, includes options for the Praetorian Guard in there. You've then got Macedonia. Okay. Uh, this will be a case of going watching Alexander and then wanting to build an army. Um, and they, of course, get them war elephants, which are a lovely, unique um, weapon type. Um, you then get Persia, quite a useful one because they've probably got the, a large range of opponents. Uh, Sparta, okay, that, I can see those two being paired up after watching 300. Uh, Thebes, that's a, a nice one to include. Um, and then you get mercenaries, sort of the, the troop types that you could get with um, a lot of the armies. Uh, rather than putting them in each one, they're listed at the end. And these can be used in a campaign as well um, to make up your, your force if you haven't got enough troops. Uh, each force is listed with which, for, which mercenaries it can use with the force. So you've got examples like um, Cretan archers, Numidian cavalry and skirmishers, uh, they're, they're in there. That, that, that's a nice little, little touch. Now, the only thing I felt was missing from that is, bear in mind who it's aimed at, was a guide that basically said, this army fought this army. I think that would have been useful. Um, I understand why they, why you don't limit people to historical opponents. I, you know, clubs are going to have figures. Um, and they're going to go, well, I've got no one who can fight that one, and it gives you more options. Um, but personally, a, a one-page guide to that I think would have been useful, um, it, considering it's aimed at beginners. Um, so I thoroughly think it's a, it's a brilliant book. I think there's a lot of work gone into it, and it, it feels good. The historical um, aspects look good. Um, I can already see um, different war bands being put together. Um, I'm seriously tempted by a Macedonian army um, with Parmenian uh, based on David Gemmell's books um, and you could even add a couple of bits of fantasy to that then if you wanted. Uh, would actually be quite easy to, to add fantasy elements in. Um, I, I can see that would work really well. So I like it. It's good. It looks good. How it plays is going to be the next step. Um, I actually got this and I was keen enough to actually go out and buy the SPQR starter set um, to get all the figures more than anything else. I've only got a few um, figures at the minute. I've got the box of goals I bought, I've got a few older goals I got from a long time ago and a box of uh, Imperial veterans plus a few figures from Gangs of Rome that I'm probably going to add in as, as sometimes objective markers because then some nice civilian figures. So I'm going to use those. Uh, when they arrive, I've got them assembled, probably painted, that might take a while. Uh, I'm then going to actually do a couple of battle reports, how it works, particularly for beginners to the game, and how it works for um, solo, because I think that's, that's a massive step for me. Uh, hopefully you found that useful, and I'll see you soon for another review.